uh, has a mask mandate at this time, so you must have your mask on or you need to remove, be removed, please. It is a mask mandate at this time. There's no there. Okay, that, that, that's that's fine. But no, uh, no. You, would you tell our SRO if you have a problem, please? Other than that, please put your mask on. Please, sir. I have no problem with that. We're not here to be intimidating. We're here to be accommodating. Okay. At this time, Pastor Bowman, would you please come up and give us a prayer, please? Yes, Lord. I want to say good evening to each of you. Good evening. Our heads bow. Father in heaven, once again, O Lord, a few of your humble servants have gathered here this evening, Father, in this room. I pray, O oh Lord, that we all gather in unity. We gather in unity to serve our community, O oh Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you should continue to bless our school district, bless our superintendent, and bless our board. And Father, let us, let our fathers, follow the decision. Because you said in your word, we are to abide by all rules that are ordained by you. And Father, we, you give us the leadership that we must follow. So Father, please touch our hearts, all souls and minds that are here and in this community. If you find any malice, any hatred, any iniquity, anything that's not of you, Lord, ask you to please remove it from us. And please, Lord, forgive us for our many sins. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick and shut in, in the hospital, nursing home, and at home sick, that are sick from various things, oh, Father, that you please be with them and keep them covered in your precious blood. Father, once again, I just want to thank you for the school system, oh, Lord, and continue to bless the parents Bless them, O oh Father, that a lot of them just step up and do what you say do in your word. Train up a child in the way that he should come. When he's old, he won't stray far from it. And Father, continue to bless our teachers, bless our administrators, and all of our cafeteria and custodian workers that rise up into every day to greet our kids, O oh Lord. And Father, give them a heart of love that they greet our children with love. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meeting, and we pray that it be all peaceful. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. And again, I'd like to thank everyone for adhering to um, what we ask. I pr we appreciate that very, very much. First, I'd like to... Um, let you know that um, Mr. Sheely is out because he needed to be with his son who is special needs. So we have uh, Mr. Campbell in his place. So I uh, just want to let you know why Mr. Sheely was not here. Um, if you would allow me, uh, board members, to, we need to have a silent prayer for Ms. Clay, who is a teacher here at the Vicksburg Warren School District, and also Miss Johnny Benice Johnson, her husband was a football coach at Warren Central. So if you will bow your heads for just a minute in a silent prayer, please. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, make a motion that we adopt the agenda as presented. Second. We move and prop the second that we uh, adopt the agenda. Any questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion 
is approved. Mr. Secretary. Board members, you have before you the minutes of the September 30th regularly scheduled board meeting. Uh, are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the minutes? Seeing as none, I make a motion that we accept the minutes for the September 30th board meeting as presented. Second. For Moon and Proctor. Second, that we accept the minutes as presented. Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion is approved. And for those who don't know, we have our other two board members. They're um, zooming in, so we have all board members present. Uh, at this time, we'll have uh, Mr. Deputy Superintendent. Yes, sir. Uh, superintendent's report, the things that have been going on this week before I begin. Um, I'm going to ask Coach. Um, I think he said that he had something he would like to say. Thank you, Mr. Kim. <coughs> Education is the most important function of the state that was did by Thomas Jefferson and he's sown the building at Grove Street. And I'd like to, for the constituents of Grove, for Grove Street, Jackson Street, Furch North and Farmer Street to Mr. David Campbell, our Deputy Superintendent, for keeping that building in, in the working condition that it is and it's a beacon for the community. And again, for the community in that area, I'd like to the Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This month, um, we have been, <coughs> the principals and the department heads have been reading over the past several months the Speed of Trust by um, Stephen Covey. And the culmination was an event where we spent a day um, talking about that book study and going through the points. Um, of that book. It was a, a good meeting, um, one of the first meetings that we've had um, since, I guess, July as a, a group all together. Um, and we've had several Zooms. I think people are Zoomed out, but um, it, it was a good meeting um, led by our superintendent and, um, and by Christy Kilroy. We met earlier in the month with United Way. They have several partnership ideas. Of course, um, they're a great partner with us and they have some continued ideas of some things that we're gonna be doing and we'll be bringing to the board um, over the next few months. Just this week, um, the um, Mississippi Association of School Administrators um, had a meeting. Uh, they asked Mr. Sheely to speak uh, on um, two concurrent sessions during that time um, of the things that we have been doing over the past few years in Vicksburg and um, I was able to attend that and as usual uh, Mr. Sheely showed up and showed out and um, <laughs> was able to show some of the positive things that that we have been doing. Um, this morning um, Mr. Sheely attended the Heinz Community College legislative briefing and um, they're launching uh, the Maritime Training Center. Um, and we've got a great relationship with Heinz Community College. Um, they do so much with our kids um, as early as our um, ninth graders with all the options that we've been able to, to work not only through River City Early College, but through our career and technical program. And so um, we were glad to see um, what they're doing with the Maritime Training. And after that, today has been a busy day for us. Um, started early this morning with that event. Um, we were able to visit six different schools. Um, we do a rookie of the month and a champion of the month. So that honors one of our new folks in the, bu the building and then one of our veterans. And um, so we were able to honor those folks, surprise them with a plaque and some goodies uh, we visited Bovina, Vicksburg High School, South Park, Warren Central High School, River City Early College, and the Academy of Innovation. And that is the superintendent's update. Well, thank you. This time we're at ELF, which is the bond project update. Jason. Hey, good evening, board. Good evening, How are you, sir? 
Uh, so you have in front of you the updates. Um, we're not going to spend too much time going through it. Um, we will hit a, a few high points on there. Um, we're extremely close to being completely done and packed up um, and removed from Vicksburg High School. Uh, we've got several things at Warren Central. We're going to get into some action items here in a few minutes. Um, but the good news is, is that up until today, we've got some pretty good weather um, to be able to work at Warren Central. I'll tell you, there are uh, three things. Um, as you look in here, you'll see that uh, we're working with Briggs on uh, the Warren Central baseball likes. I believe we're pretty close to having that resolved. Uh, Beachwood Elementary, if you guys remember the phase two renovation projects. Uh, unfortunately, Briggs, you can jump in. We're not quite at the uh, same level of resolution on it as we are at Warren Central. Um, and then AOI, we're still discussing and working through uh, the flooring finish and uh, the time um, request with the contractor getting that wrapped up. But in saying all that, other than Warren Central, for the vast majority of these projects are, are being occupied and used um, for the most part. Uh, we've got some things we're still working on, punching out floors and working on a few things. But again, most of them are um, uh, being worked on. <laughs> Any questions on updates? If not, we'll look at action items. I don't know why I put Bomar in there um, under an action item. There is no action needed on Bomar. Um, again, contractors got a few punch list items. Um, we're actually meeting over there in the morning to look at that. But the uh, community um, uh, grant that was submitted, they accepted the submittal. That doesn't mean they approved it. They just acknowledged it was received and appeared to be in order. So they will make that decision mid-December. And then we'll have some steps to go through in January. But remember, if, even if we get denied that, the response set aside to address the uh, exterior of Bomar if we need to. <coughs> so, moving on with action items at Warren Central. Uh, Mark is on the line with us and he can chime in if we need it. Um, Riggs, I kind of lean to you. Do you want to go over these one at a time to the board? I mean, if the board doesn't have any objection to any of them, I just recommend you take them up and block. But it's. If anybody wants to pull one out for discussion, yeah. that's up to I don't, each um, the, the first item, the double doors, I, I don't know that my opinion's changed on it. That's, yeah, that one's still on there. And it, obviously the number has come down. Uh, Mark, are you with us? Yeah. The, the whole, the issue with that one is just a final resolution. Either we're going to approve it or disapprove it. That makes sense. It was tabled at the last meeting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So we didn't need, uh, a decision to approve that or to deny it, we'll, and we'll handle that with the contractor. Mark, is that item two and not item one, or are they together? Uh, both of them are the same thing, item one and two. Okay. We're both so what, what, the last um, What's this additional to cost of 10000 Has Remember this part been done? The temporary enclosures. They had to build a temporary roof over a portion of the kitchen. That portion is part of the Agora and can't be completed because we can't complete the Agora work. So they had to build a temporary roof. I remember that portion of the work. Yeah, that was the only way they could get the work done. I thought we talked yes, about this last week. So the 10,000 is different than the um, 6,000, the, 6, the doors. Is this work that was already done? Yes, sir. As yes. you recall on the temporary roof, that's the one I explained last month that I had disapproved repeatedly. And then they convinced me that actually they were correct, that it was additional work caused by the delays in the Agora. And so it is additional. I guess I'm trying to make a point. I don't necessarily disagree. I think y'all explained it fine last meeting, uh, but we have a process. You don't do right. work that's not before it's approved. Correct. Brian. Brian, if yeah. I remember at the last meeting, what we talked about was that um, they that was the only way they were going to be able to continue their work. Is that right, Mark? Was that we had to put, they had to put that? Yes, and we directed them to do the work okay. saying. That's item two. Uh, that's item two, different from yes. item one. Okay. That's correct. Right. All right. I make a motion that we approve item two for ten thousand one hundred one dollars. Do you want to? You want to finish we the need rest to. of them? Well, uh, we're, we're taking them one by one. Does it matter? Can we just? No, we can't. That's fine. We could have voted on it the time it took us to stop. <laughs> we're trying to trying to keep okay. you, uh, in order. 
Yeah. So be quick. yeah, item one is yeah, the one that we believe is not. If we're taking it in order, item one. Um, that's. I the make one a motion that we table items. item one. There's a motion on the floor to table item one. Is there a second? It died for a lack of second. What is the pleasure of item one? I would like more information on that, uh, President. I would, if, if it's something that we're gonna be fighting every board meeting, I think we need to um, probably need to deny that claim and then let uh, the contractors deal with the uh, engineers and architects on that. But I can make that motion if the board is, in, you know, wants me to do that. Make a motion to, to deny. To a motion to deny is that is that Mr. Slayton? Yes, I'll make a motion that item one uh, for six thousand nine thirty one point one zero is denied by this board. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we deny item one. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, opposed, like sign. Motion is approved. Item two. I make a motion that we uh, approve item two, an expenditure of $10,101 for the work that would have to be do, done due to the, the changes in the project. There's Second. a motion to approve item two. Second. Second. It's been moved and properly. Second. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. Item three. Item three, um, when we got into the old library, um, the existing walls were in worse repair than thought, obviously being behind bookcases and, and other things. So that price is to just build that out with jet board and have a nice, clean, new, fresh, uh, smooth wall there. So what is it now? What what surface, what's? You kind plaster. of have a, a Mark, were you saying something? It, it's plaster. Yeah, so you get old plaster. Old plaster on some CNT. <laughs> Some of it's on metal studs. That's, or, that's a pretty, you know, lathe and stud system. That's a pretty long wall. It's both. There's two rooms of the library. Is there both yes. rooms? It's both both rooms. It, it's basically the two long walls. I believe it's the, uh, I guess that would be the east wall and the south wall. The old library. Yeah. And it was, it was roughly, if I remember, $13,000 to repair the associated plaster back to the same finish we give. We did yet. Okay. I make a motion that we approve item three to laminate the walls in the old library with gypsum $3,454. Second. It's been moved in property. Second, that we approve item three. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. Aye. Item four. Okay, item four is the screen wall in the art building. It is uh, just a straight credit back to not do that. Uh, Mr. What? Green's okay with that. It's thirty-two thousand three hundred. Well, the whole reason for hiding it. Do we paint that art building? I mean, the, the art building. That's our new entrance to go around the back of the building, to drop children off, mm -hmm. and to go back around the front. And if I remember right, the, the outside of that art building was had years and years of project painting it's against it and it's building. not very attractive at the time. Right. So there is refinish associated with that art building. No, no. Go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, we do nothing to the exterior of the art building. And then I say we build the wall. Why are we, why are we wanting to delete this? This is something we plan to do. Is there a reason for wanting to delete it? This Looking is something... for cost savings measures. That's all. I would say that unless you're going to paint the outside of that building if y'all have not seen this building it's got like it, it, the children were doing art projects against the building or they were you know kind of it's had years and years of that on it it's not uh, not that it's unattractive it's just not very presentable to be something as a the front of one of our buildings as people are going it won't around. match the new front in its current condition pardon i said it wouldn't match the greenness of the front correct i say you build the wall well, Jason, oh, we're Jason, really going to take no action. We, we're, I mean, we're we've already approved for you to build the wall. Correct. Did Mr. Green on? Jason. Did Mr. Green yes. on? Slide. Um, is it possible for us to approve this credit and request that you get us a estimate to repaint that wall to make match the motif of the back of that building? 
I think the condition of that wall, you need to see it, Kimball. It's not in great shape. Painting oh, it may I've not. Seen, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's got, it's got material like didn't... stucco and stuff stuck to it. It's got art pride. I mean, it's not a f smooth surface to paint like a finished, uh, like an old metal building. If you're just going to go resurface or to paint the outside of the metal building, it's not in that condition, if I'm not mistaken. I'd like to get I would like to uh, get Mr. Green's opinion on that. Mr. Green, are you all? Yes, I'm here. I don't disagree that if we're not going to build the wall, then something <laughs> needs to be done to the surface of the building. Um, it is, as Brian said, it's not in the greatest shape, at least that exterior wall. So I, I would think if we're not going to build the wall, then, then something probably needs to be done to the outside of the building. I, yeah, that's why I'm saying we don't deviate from the plan. We already have a plan. Unless there's some other way that's cheaper that's going to look just as good, I say you continue on with the plan. I think the most aesthetically pleasing thing would be to build a wall and it will match the character of all the new construction on the building. Okay. The only reason why I brought this up, we brought it up a few months ago, is that uh, work on that should commence within the next couple of weeks if we don't take the credit. I think we need to build a wall. It's part of the plan. It was the original plan. Mr. Green? It's in the budget. It's in the budget. Let's build a wall. So what is the pleasure of the board? Let me ask one question if I may, Mr. President. Is yes, anything, sir. if the wall is different than what was originally planned, is there any issue of liquidated? Is this going to delay the project so we're dealing with the LD issue? No. No? Okay. I make a motion that we continue along with the original plan of and constructing the wall to seclude the apartment. And not accept item four as a credit. And not accept item four as a credit. Second. And you say, and not accept. Item four. Okay. Denied, basically. Denied. Basically. Okay. Denied. So it's a, that's a denial. Is, yes. that, is that your motion, yes, sir? sir? Motion is to, de to deny item four. Second. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly second that we deny item four. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed aye. like sign. Motion is denied. Okay, I'll, I'll get us started on items five, six, and seven. They relatively all go together. If you guys okay. remember the four by which is the tag board material, if you walk in kind of the recesses going down the hallways. Um, there's some wood trim out there now. You remember we came back with a credit, we're just gonna build it out with sheetrock. This was where the lockers used to be? Correct. Okay. Uh, conversation came up, you know, can one layer of sheetrock handle you know, high school students up and down the hall? So you see some options there. Obviously the credit to do that is 21,896. That's if we don't do it. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, the things down below are adding back um, to That's that. That's correct. So, is there options to do something in lieu of the Just yeah. So originally in the plan, what was supposed to have been done? It was a tack board material. So you basically would have... We had metal yeah. studs infill where the lockers were, jet board applied to it, and then the, I believe it would be basically primed, and then they put the floor bow on that jib board surface. That's correct. And it's it's a nice self-healing tack board is what it amounts to. I mean, it's, it's a neat product. And Mr. Green, you can chime in if you want to. I think one of the concerns was just the amount of it, and there's a lot of it. And that's and how this conversation started. Yes, if I can explain that a little bit. Um, once they, they did one portion of a wall to kind of finish it and let us see what it looked like. Well, shortly thereafter, that four bow board is a magnet for dirt, um, any yeah, kind of dust, debris, cobwebs, and within a week after they put it up there, it looked terrible. Um, and so they still had not come up with a great finish up there. So while they were still debating on what they were going to do, I just suggested to Mark and Jason that we look at alternatives since the faux, bo faux board didn't look like it was going to be as we expected it to be. So knowing that we've had a lot of overruns on this project, um, and this is something we would like to do, but not knowing exactly where we're at, would it hurt us to defer this decision on this item 
until we get a little bit further toward the end of the project, or is this something we need to do now? To you can you can wait. Yeah, I said you can wait. You can have school as it stands right now. No, I mean we can't wait another year, but you can have school. And we have plenty of time. I just wondered if we would like to go look at it. We I have think we need. To, I'd like to look at it. I, I mean, I, I don't know that. I, I'd like to see also where we are in the budget to see if we're going to be able to. I assume we don't have this in contingency. No, we don't. That, yeah, we're out of contingency there. And and you'll see building A and building B offer different different solutions. I mean, we we've, we've got some things we can do in A that we can't do in B, and vice versa. That's why you see the different varying costs there. So. <laughs> So impact gypsum board is just sheetrock, a stronger version of sheetrock. Yes, correct. And it's not uncommon to see that in schools. And, and remember, we've got a, a higher grade sheetrock at AOI um, in the corridors um, when you walk in there as well. Jason, this is Kimball. If, if, so I'm reading this right. Our, if we delete the four bow and go with option six, three and option seven, two, it's going to cost us 20 grand to do that, right? Am I reading that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there any other questions? What is the pleasure of the board for items five through seven? I'll make a motion that we accept item five, that we accept item six, three, and item seven, two to get the school finished. Today. There's a motion to approve item uh, five, six, and seven. Is there a second? Six, six, three, and seven, two, right? Six, three, seven, two, right. That's right. So you would take the credit of 21,896 and accept the add of 22,770 and the add of 19,750. Is that correct, Kimball? Yes. Okay. Are you, are you, before, hold on one second, Mr. Mr. Pratt, please. The motion died for a lack of a second. Do you have a comment now, sir? Yeah, I, I would. Um, I think we need to do something. I'm just concerned, Kimball, that the um, just putting sheetrock up is not going to last, and we're going to be back here fixing it six months from now. So I was just wanting to just hold off a little while till we see where, where we are with the budget and decide if we could, have, you know, if which and, option we can afford. And Mark and I'll be glad to meet you guys over there, whoever needs to. To look at it. I mean, we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do one of these options. I think leaving it the way it is is not an option. Long term. Long term. So the question is, what can we? What's the best value and the most durable? Um, so we get the longest okay, life. We said, said we do not want the four bow tack hold. Correct. <coughs> correct. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we accept item five and we table item six and seven. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept item five and table item six and Great. item seven. Six, three, seven, two, yeah. Is that right? Six, three, and seven, two. All right. We'll approve five and, and table six and seven. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose like sign. <laughs> Motion is approved. Do you have anything else, sir? Make sure I am, my notes are correct. Um, denied item one, accepted two, accepted three, denied four, accepted five, and tabled six and seven. Correct. Okay, perfect. Mark and I will get on board with that. So, nothing else. Thank you, board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Jason, if you would uh, keep your phone handy because we got one executive session item i need to if you leave okay. i need to plug you back in on the phone okay Perfect. thank you thank you this time we have our financial report miss lewis please come up Okay, for our statement of cash flow, uh, you have your, the reports in front of you. The statement of cash flow as of September, the estimated fund balance is $18 million. Uh, we will see this number increase in January and February, which still is consistent with our trend uh, as we go throughout the fiscal year. Uh, for our ad valorem, our September ad valorem tax collections total $1.3 million. 
Uh, this is coming in a little higher. That's probably due to our tax sales uh, that came in a little higher this year, uh, which is a plus for the district. Our MAEP collections, uh, we received our appropriation for September of 2 million three eighty eight five seventy three again this does not include the teacher pay raise uh, I want I like to keep that out so you can see the trend uh, of both the teacher pay raise and also the uh, appropriation for the casino revenue uh, we received our casino revenue on time our August revenue received uh, in September total sixty seven thousand five hundred twenty dollars and forty seven cents and we have received our September collection of $58,084.59. And that concludes my report. Are there any questions? That being all, I'd like to accept the financial secretary's report. Second. It's been moved. Did someone see you second it, Mr. Fred? Yes. It's been moved and probably second that we we'll, uh, accept the financial report. Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Opposed aye. like sign. Motion is approved. I think I have one action item as well. Um, or request for uh, approval of accounting firm for our bank reconciliation. Um, and this helps us strengthen our internal control. Uh, we have a fiscal 19. Uh, audit that's, that has just completed and uh, the finding of our internal control for our bank break. So this is in support of that uh, for about six to nine months that we need that service to get us cleaned up and closed out so we can move forward. Would you continue to use that service ongoing as a check and balance or is no, that not? This is just because we, you know, the delay uh, that we need to get that uh, strengthens so we can uh, and this because this is services it does not do we have a dollar amount and do we have uh, this doesn't have to be bid out because it's services correct that's correct yes sir. Not. Yeah. i think she's approving the approval to get them to bring back to you that's correct yeah. okay yes. so we're not yeah. approving it we're just giving no. her uh, to go uh, get yes. to go that's find correct. somebody all right yes. i make a motion that we approve the request to go uh, solicit for rec uh, Accounting Second. firm for reconciliation services. Second. There's a motion to approve G2 for the approval of the accounting firm for bank reconciliation services. Are there any questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. This time we're at the Proposed consent agenda. Are there any items to be pulled? May we pull H2? H9 and 16. Please. Are there any H16. other items to be pulled? H16. 16, uh, 2, 9, 16, 2, 9, 16. Are there any other items to be approved? If not, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the exclusion of H2, H9, and H16. Second. It's been moved in property. Second. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. On H2, we have two items I would like for us to look at. And Ms. McKinnis, um, I don't have a number on a page, but I can give you what I have in front of me here. And it's going to be um, Entergy and Kelly's air conditioning. I'm just uh, concerned about the ACs, if that's a district-wide bill cost, or if it's just one single building that cost us that much. 
but it's on. I can give you this right here, ma'am. And um, and that's and that's all I have. And, and which one for Oh. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think I have it. Yeah, part part okay. Yes, ma'am. And it's on the other one is on the second page. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I have no other. Is there a motion to uh, make a motion to approve H two? Sir, it's been moved and properly second. Are you ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion is approved. H nine. I just have a, a concern about the speed of our uniforms. We're about to go into the, I'll say the second semester and pretend like we're all in college. Um, and we're asking for uniforms, the purchase of uniforms, the purchase of sh uh, shoes for our cafeteria workers. In Jim Sturgis' opinion, and Jim Sturgis' pin, opinion only, this should have been done before school started. And I'm just, uh, I, I, it's a $75 for shoes and $100 for uniforms. Uh, for those of you all who don't have uh, what we're looking at it. And, and I just want to uh, ask our nutritionists um, to please get the uniforms for the ladies and young men before school starts. So a question real quick. Some uh, of these, are they not contract staff? Are we allowed to, or some of them? Yes, some of them are, but these are just, this is for district employees. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes, sir. You're very correct. And, and that's all. I, I just want to make sure timing is everything. And that's all I have with that one. Would someone please make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that Thank we you, approve. Ah. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. We're moving property second. Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. like sign. Motion is approved. H-16. Ms. Hill. Yes, sir. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I, I'm with the um, Juvenile Detention Center is what we're talking about. Yes, sir. And uh, for those of you uh, who, I guess, Mr. Attorney, I can say where the Juvenile Detention Center is. Yes. Okay. For those of you who do not know, if you get your driver's license, it's in that area. Okay. And uh, my question is, um, I already know the answer, but I have to ask the question anyway. Do we own the building? No, sir. Okay. We yeah. do not own the building. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you're asking for internet accessibility. Are we responsible for that, or are the persons who actually own the building responsible for that? We are responsible for it because we are responsible for the education that the children receive while they're down there. So having improved internet connections will allow them to have access to things that we use at the school level already and all of those different things take their assessment. So if they don't have good internet, they won't be able to fully participate in the education. So is this for 12, 12 months? That's the, uh, the security license part of it. So once we install the routers, there are some things that we have to have according to way in order to be able to monitor what's going on down there. And so that's what that is. I know. Okay. And also, uh, for those who might not know, I'm not saying you do not know, but I'll just uh, repeat it, is that with juvenile detention, at the juvenile detention center, if students from other states, and correct me when I go wrong, please, Ms. Hill, students from other states can come to our juvenile detention center and we must educate them. Is that correct, Ms. Hill? That is correct. So, so, we're, so we're not just educating Warren County, we're educating other states also. 
I see the $2,400, and it could be a legitimate cost. I have no idea what it's really for. Um, is it a month? Is it an internet service? Is it the the, the cost of the of the the, soft, the license for the router? Because I think we do license those versus purchase those. I, I don't know what this entails. Yes, sir. That is my understanding. Uh, is I did Wade work. on? Is Wade? Wade? You out there waiting? He okay. was here earlier, but that is my understanding that we have to have uh, this license and support. And so that allows him to be able to monitor everything that's going on down there through the routers and, and all of that. Okay, well, still doesn't tell me what I need to do. There's Wade. The, sec the second hey, shows the hardware. So what, what's this $2,400 giving us? Is it internet cost? Is it just the hardware? It's just the hardware. It's the appliance and the okay. license to, to manage it. To manage it. And so they already have an internet connection we're utilizing. This is yes. not for internet. This is strictly so we can have our own network there yes. riding on their internet connection. We're going to build a VPN tunnel okay. from that location back to the district office. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I make a motion that we approve H16. Second. Second. Moved and probably second. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay. We are down to item K1. Uh, Dr. McGee. All right, good evening. Good evening. Uh, board members, you have the monthly updates for the schools that are in school improvement. And I just want to bring your attention to, um, if you look at one of the updates where we look at benchmark, first benchmark assessment, that is the only change from last month. So we have the principals on the line. If you have any questions, um, they definitely can go into more detail um, on that. But we did complete our first benchmark assessment uh, this month and the principals were able to input that data into um, the monthly update. So that is the only change. Well, uh, uh, let me rephrase that. Another change is on page two for October that looks at the enrollment, attendance, discipline, uh, teacher attendance, and discipline referrals. So those are the, the, the changes that we have. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Yep. And that's for information only. Thank you, Doc. Yes, sir. Okay, we're now down to K2, <clears throat> which encompasses um, the COVID and also the mask mandate. So at this time, what we will do first will be the uh, overview on the vaccination or the inoculation incentive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so board members, what you have, have before you, um, and I'll just kind of read through this as well for, for uh, the audience, but in accordance to the with the guidance of the U.S. Department of Education, ESSER funds may be used in a, var a variety of ways to support vaccination efforts, including incentives for staff to receive a COVID-19 vaccination. So, local education agencies may in may incentivize vaccinations for personnel through amended contracts for licensed employees or other agreements for at-will employees. If implementing a vaccination incentive program, local education agencies may have local boards approved prior to implementation, and the local education agency must establish written procedures to determine, determine the liability of the cost and to maintain effective internal controls over fe the federal award. So the purpose of this is to increase the number of employees who choose to get fully vaccinated or to motivate employees to get vaccinated sooner than they otherwise may have. An employee is fully vaccinated two weeks after the second dose of Pfizer or Moderna vaccinations or two weeks after the first dose of Johnson & Johnson, the Johnson & Johnson vaccin vaccination. Now the benefit of this, uh, there's an ongoing benefit to our students 
and the district when employees are fully vaccinated. An employee who is in close contact with a positive COVID-19 case does not have to quarantine. This allows the employee to continue to work. Teachers do not have to obtain a substitute, which is a cost saving to the district. But more importantly, students are able to continue receiving quality instruction with their teacher in front of them. So what I have before you there is the, the overview, the purpose and the benefit. The next page talks about the procedures. And also we have the um, Google form that the, the, the employees would have to complete. Um, we have in those procedures, the controls that we will have in place for that. And also the, the data that supports um, this initiative. I have a question if I may, Doc. Yes, sir. A uh, couple of questions. Um, if you are already vaccinated or inoculated, yes, sir. will you get a, if it is approved, will you get the incentive? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, who, I'll make this easy for you, who will not get the incentive? The school board members and who else? And our contract. Okay. Workers. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Are you Is there a action? motion to approve? Yes. Do we need to take action on that one? Sir? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. That, yes, sir. That's part of it. You, I make a motion that we approve uh, the policy. The employee vaccination <coughs> incentive. Yeah, the, yeah, the employee vaccination incentive. Second. It's been moved and properly. Second. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion is approved. We're now at item B, which is the mask mandate. I will say that uh, we have uh, some constituents here. Um, you can't see them, but I will mention that they have signs um, and asking us to, and I'll read a few of the signs. It says, no more masks, remove mask mandate, let our children breathe, my kid, my choice. So I just wanted to read those to let you know that we're not ignoring you out there. We see you, we hear you, um, but you won't be able to speak. But at this time, uh, the board is here and it does anyone have uh, anything they would like to say about the mass mandate? Jim. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple of things I'd like to um, bring up, you know, in discussion of this. Yes, ma'am. One of the main um, concerns is for teachers with um, autoimmune compromised. And I think that it's really important if as a board we choose to lift the mask mandate that we ensure that those teachers are allowed to mandate it in their classrooms because we want them to continue to be able to teach and not to be in any kind of danger um, in any way. So I, I, strong, I think that we need to make sure that that's an opportunity for our teachers that are autoimmune compromised. Yes, ma'am, without a doubt. Okay, um, and I, I, I think I'll let Brian kind of talk for me because I've got a froggy throat and so I'm going to let Brian say everything else we kind of had, that I had kind of talked about. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you, so. ma'am. Mr. Pratt. So uh, let's kind of talk about how we got here. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure the public understands that we don't take, we do not take lightly requiring our students to wear a mask. Um, we started the school year, the CDC did not recommend uh, anyone that was vaccinated uh, to actually wear a mask. They said you didn't have to, it was great. So it encourages people. Shortly after we started school, uh, the Delta variant went through the roof in our community. Then the CDC changed their requirement. Then we also reacted and have required masks to be, uh, to be worn. Uh, we saw the the infection rate, if you look at it before, I think in June, it was down to 2%. It's gone up to in the high 20s. I think this last week it was at 10%. And the infection rate, for those who don't know, is the number of individuals in Warren County that are being 
uh, tested what how many of those what percentage of those are showing positive and that is the best way to indicate how prevalent it is spreading within the community um, we've been at 10 12 13 the last two or three weeks it looks like we're going to be below 10 percent this next week and I think it's important that we realize that we know that at some point in time we're not going to work we all have no intentions of wearing masks forever and that we come up with some way some light into the tunnel some criteria that we set that once we reach that that we uh, that we are able to still protect our students as as much as possible um, because we're all learning in this process we all don't know you know, we we all my my medical degree from uh, internet medical degree is on its way. I haven't received it yet, but it is in the mail as well as everybody else's. Uh, so it's forced us all to learn more about things that we when we first took this job, you know, didn't anticipate. Um, I think that our if you look at our rate in Vicksburg, now we have um, we received a lot of uh, support for removing the mandate, and I have to tell you, we've received a lot of support for not removing the mandate. Um, just about as much, to be honest with you. Um, and it is a very sensitive issue, but I think it's imperative knowing that we don't want to continue this forever, that us as a board decide what is the, at what point do we stop wearing masks? Um, and with the understanding that this virus has thrown us all for a loop, it's, it's twisted, it's changed. And at some point, you know, if, if some if the conditions change again, it might be pre, uh, prudent to wear masks again after the point that we stop wearing masks. So personally, um, I would be comfortable with uh, us either determining a, a date uh, and, and as long as the infection rate continues to go down and then, um, but also even after we, re if, we relieve, if we lift the ban or the requirement, that we still might require, um, I would recommend that we still require that if a school has an outbreak, that we might consider requiring that school to mask up for the two week period of time until that outbreak's gone away, but not the entire school district. Um, we have some schools that have had very few cases. So we've had some schools that have had a lot more than others. Uh, so it would, um, but in all of this, we would still recommend anyone that can take the vaccination be vaccinated whether that's a student, now all students uh, can, can receive the vaccination, have been approved for them to receive the vaccination, as well as all of our staff. Um, and if you still are uncomfortable, at some point in time we decide to lift the mandate, uh, you are still, um, I, I, I would still encourage some people that want to wear a mask to still wear a mask. That's, not, that's, their, that's their priority. So I just put this out here for us to talk about it. I think it's imperative that we figure out what that line in the sand is so we can give the people, you know, we are all uh, flying by the seat of our pants with this started the first of the year. None of us, when we started the first of the year, we wanted to give direction to the district that we wouldn't look like we were knee jerk reacting. And then two weeks later, due to the requirements and the variant going through the roof, we had to do a knee jerk reaction and require the mask. Yes. Uh, it has worked. Um, it, it is not pleasant to wear masks, but if you look at the data, the number of the students, the infection rate, even while the community infection rate went through the roof, our number of students reporting infections, staff, um, and any outbreaks has has drastically gone down or has it hasn't gone down to zero by any means, but it has not followed the trend of the outbreak within our community. We've just had a, a steady amount of, of those and that went down directly after we started wearing the masks. Uh, it, you know, the mask did have an effect. As it was climbing in August, we started wearing masks and we kind of we kind of hovered a little bit and then it, and it went down uh, as far as the number of students that we had to, to quarantine or um, and those that tested positive. Um, and the mask helps us in quarantining for those who don't know. If uh, Jim and I are in the same classroom and I, and I test positive, uh, then if Jim and I were uh, following CDC guidelines within uh, both wearing masks, Jim might not be required to quarantine and therefore that would allow him to continue to function where I got to go home because I tested positive. So those kind of things help us keep school going. We do not want to go back to a virtual option. Virtual is, was a stopgap measure that we had to do. It is not the optimal way to educate children. We need students sitting in front of teachers. To do that, we need the teacher well and we need the students well. 
So I understand everyone's frustration uh, and I feel the same way. I'd love not to be wearing this because I could, I could probably breathe a little better. But, uh, but it is, you know, for the benefit of everyone, that's what we've chosen to do. So I don't know how the other board members feel. I think it's a great opportunity for all, all to, to kind of discuss it and get it out there. We have to, and I personally believe we have to give some indication to the public where, where, that there is light in the tunnel. Uh, I personally would be comfortable with lifting it now with the, with the contingency that if a school has an outbreak, that that school basically has to wear masks again. But that does not preclude us from, if the community has an outbreak and we go through the roof again, like we did in August for requiring masks again. It's not that we're saying never mask ever. We're saying we, we hope we've gotten to a point. Um, now, Jim, you provided some information uh, from, um, yeah, I'm about, yes, I'm about to take care of it. Yes, I'm about to talk about okay. that. Right? I was just waiting until you finish. I think that's very important. Okay, well, thank, thank you, Mr. Brad, for that. Yes, sir. Uh, since you're going to do that, I just want to uh, say uh, to all the people here, you know, uh, feel what you what you what 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 you believe, but you got to understand this. I'm a coach. I have I have no I have no. Uh, size is nothing but trying to do the right thing. I believe that I would not go have a triple bypass surgery tomorrow with my mechanic. That's true. I wouldn't go. Now, uh, you have, we have, we have medical doctors. We have people that have, have made their life profession at doing this. And we have one right here that I think is good as any, and that's Dr. Daniel Edney. And uh, as Mr. St excuse me. As Mr. Sturgis would say, that you know, uh, it's no hurry. This this is not over yet. I, I've talked to Dr. Andy. This is not over. People are dying. Now you might not know who are dying. People are dying, and I will not, in no circumstance, ever put on my shoulder anybody's child dying when I know that it can. It, this is not forever. And if we have to hold on for a little while to let this thing go, then we will, that I will. But uh, it's not that, it's not, to me, it's not that important right now. Thank you, Cuz. And, and what I'd like to say is, and I'm about to express an opinion, and it is solely Jim Sturgis' opinion, not the Vicksburg Warren School District School Board. So it is solely James E. Sturgis Jr.'s opinion. Let's not prioritize freedom from COVID restrictions over freedom from COVID itself. Now, as Coach had just mentioned, um, I have Dr. Daniel P. Etnis, who is the Chief Medical Officer uh, with the Mississippi State Department of Health. And I must give two sides. I've given your side, I read what you all have in front of us. So I will read what I have in front of me now. And this is Dr. Edney's and his point, uh, uh, opinion. And I also have the Vicksburg Ministerial Alliance. And I will read what they uh, also said. It says, greetings and thank you for your request from MSDH guidance regarding masking for students in grades K through 12. The Mississippi State Department of Health fully endorses the current CDC guidelines, which strongly recommends of wearing masks while indoors for all students, teachers, and staff from grades K through 12. This recommendation is based on the highly contagious nature of the Delta variants of COVID-19 and the fact in Mississippi, we are still seeing three times the level of community transmission as compared to pre-Delta waves. It is also based on the current clinical evidence of safety and efficacy of wearing masks at this stage of the pandemic. Thankfully, our numbers are improving, but the Delta variant wave has not yet resolved. We are hopeful that we can soon be able to lift the universal mask recommendation, but feel it is yet too soon. 
We are grateful for your leadership in following our recommendations for students and staff safely thus far, and please understand that you have saved lives in Warren County by doing so. We are optimistic that with vaccinations now available for all students five and up, we will continue to reduction in the community transmission, especially in our school system. And he's included some CDC information, and I will not go over that, but he's asking us, uh, Dr. Daniel P. Etney, at this time to continue the mass mandate. And the Vicksburg Ministerial Alliance has is, is been brought to them that uh, the Vicksburg Warren School District Board may be considering moving the requirements for students to wear face masks while attending school. VMA believes that our youth Health and safety is vital in the construct of our community and not just the youth, but the entire administration, staff, workers within the district. If the board is considering removing the mask requirement while youth attend school, we are against this. Therefore, we are asking the board not to remove requirements of the face mask until January of 2022. This allowed time for parents to get their youth vaccinated through the holiday seasons. See, the numbers are not going to rise and continue the downward curve. And there are a list of ministerial uh, persons who signed this. I will end by saying that if you look at where we are now, the kids as of tonight and starting tomorrow, they actually have 41 days left in school before the new year, okay? They have 22 days before Thanksgiving, then they have a nine-day break. And as you know, uh, they say all your family members can come and visit you this year. And then after that, we have 19 days, and then we'll have uh, a Christmas break, which is 17 days. So combined, we have... 41 days left before school is out with that and I just wanted to let you know that um, if you look at where I'm coming from James Edward Sturgis Jr. with Thanksgiving and Christmas and we see no surge then I would more than happy look at a, with my, my vote on the Jim Sturgis vote, would be vote to uh, give you choice to wear a mask or not wear the mask in January after we've all gotten together with our families because they're coming from all over and seeing if, if, if it's not a spike. But then, now that's only Jim Sturgis' opinion on this. And so in the January meeting, if, if the spike is not there, I will, I, I'm looking you in the eye and I'll look in your eye again. I'll be the first to raise my hand to give you a choice. But at this particular time, I'm just scared of the breaks that we have that uh, I cannot, as Coach said, I cannot uh, see my vote for voting to release it now. So that's my spiel for the night. Um, do we have any other? Uh, any other? Hey, uh, Mr. President. Yes, um, sir. I would just like to know what is our number? When do we say that this is over? I mean, do we, we don't have the authority, we, we don't have the divine authority to say that. We don't have any idea of when this is going to happen. If we have a spike in January, then we're going to keep a mask going until May. And then, I mean, what, what do we do? How do we as a board assess this uh do we just hang our hat on on the, what the cdc says and not not use local data i don't i'm i'm wanting to know that personally um because i hate to see i hate to see these kids suffer through something that's not needed but as coach said it would break my heart for me personally to make any kid put any kid in jeopardy over anything like that so, so i just want to kind of get that out there do we have a a uh, benchmark. What is our benchmark? Yes, sir. And and, and that's what I said. Um, is that I would I would like to see January as our benchmark, only because of the two holidays we have. I think he's asking for like a, 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 a 
not a date or when we do it, but like, uh, what what is the infection a percentage percent rate in the community? Percentage. <coughs> well, an yeah. infection rate. Because let me, let me share something with you. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I, yeah, sir. Okay, I see what you're saying. I, okay, ma'am. We, yeah. ma we need a number an yep. infection rate. Percentage. So, yes, ma'am. It's a percent perspective. When we start in the first of August, our community uh, had a um, positivity rate of twenty one point six percent. Okay. Okay. We're now down at ten for last week. If you look at the number, I think we only had twenty three cases so far this week. The week's not over yet, but we're trending to be below ten percent. When we started, and let's go back a little further to see when we were. Let's go back to July. To give you some reference, July 1st, when we were making all these decisions for starting school, we were at 1.5%. Big difference. Big difference. So what we're, I think what he's asking is, could we come up with a 7%, a 8%, 9%, whatever? Yeah, I'd say yeah, that yeah. when we get 5%. below 7%. Yeah. Because we I mean, started school and the one. first decision was made. We were higher. We were about where we are right now when we started school before the CDC changed their recommendation. <laughs> So that's what I think he's asked because I think the parents want to know. Now, I personally feel that if what we decide to lift it, that there still are circumstances where we might require them to wear it. I still believe if Warren Central or Vicksburg High has an outbreak at that school after we've lifted it, that we would require that school for two weeks to wear masks to make sure we've killed it in that school. But then after that two weeks, they would go back to being mask free. Just that school. Because I still think we have pockets that might pop up that we need to be, you know, aware of. So what does everyone think? I mean, we're, the, 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 again, we're all would, kind of I, doctors here. Yeah, I would even say 8% uh, uh, would be good uh, because, and the reason why I say that is you, you, you're, you're going to be outside more come January. It's still going to be cold, but you, you, you won't be as inclusive like we are now. You still have basketball season, which is an indoor sport. But then you start getting into the outdoor sports, and most people will be outside with that. So, Jim, would you? I know you, you're okay with January. Yes, sir. Could we? Could we just give the public a date and say if we're below eight, if we continue to stay above sure. around eight percent, that unless something changes or unless the board takes action, that we'll give them a date that says this is the day we're stop wearing masks, and unless the board takes additional action. Okay. Would you be okay? I mean, we, we would lift the band-aid, but people still can wear it if yes, they want to wear it. All day long, okay. we would encourage people to wear them. And I still think that even after you raise it, you still have to have, if there's an outbreak at the school, the flexibility to say that school needs to basically mask up for two weeks, like they have now, until we, you know, and, we, and an outbreak has already been defined. It's not something that we're defining ourselves. Um, that way we can give people hope when this is it, this is ending. We can, yes, sir. Now we come and, and you know they have they have skin in the game. If, when you go to your relative's house over over the holidays, if this rate goes through the roof and we're in the twelve we're in the fourteen percent range on in January, then we're probably not going to lift the mask mandate. So we need to. Well, okay. Um, we'll come back on the fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we. we I, most of them have been a 10-day thing, right? But, well, yeah, but if, they, if they're already infected, they're going to be tested. You're going to get that in the number already. So, in other words, if I get sick the day after Christmas, if I go to Grandma's house and I get sick, we're going to know by January 1 that Christmas caused the, the rate to go up. So, no, no, no. I, I meant the, the date. You wanted a due date. Oh, I, would yeah. say the first, I would say the first day back. When they come back after break, if the rate stays nope. below 8%. But the, you need to have a... a go ahead, uh, Miss Bullet. <laughs> Yeah, I, if I looked at my calendar right, um, Martin Luther King holiday is like the 16th, so we could make the 17th the lifting of the mask. That would give us 15 days after um, the Christmas holidays and then the day after uh, Martin Luther Ho yes. King so holiday. The, so the only challenge with that, Sally, is that if someone got sick over the holidays, whether it was New Year's Eve or Christmas, those numbers should already be reflected in the infection rate that you're using to gauge whether or not to remove the mask. Waiting another two weeks is what's that giving you? I think you, if we're saying that 8% is our number, if we're below 8% on the first, when we come back to school, then the masks are lifted. But if we are, if, 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 if we're out of school, uh, whoever does the numbers it's won't the have the numbers until two no, weeks no, later. No, no, this is a state number. This is a state department of health. This is a state site. 
the state. This is the state Department of Health's website. I'm getting this right. Oh no, no, but I'm, I'm speaking of the our, our numbers here. That 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 I can see what you're saying. You're talking about the state department. In our community but that, that goes County up is below yeah. is eight percent or or you know yeah. Let's say I, let's say not uh, but less than nine percent. I, I would like to. I mean, I I, I like Sally's of. Um, the 17th to just give everybody a chance to breathe to whatever we have to do and we'll release my opinion only release the mandate and then we can give choice to whether you want to wear a mask or not but i i will still i fight vehemently for the teachers and administrators that have autoimmune compromised family yep. members that they still have the right to in their classroom mandate a mask in their own classroom uh -huh. even if we're not having a mask mandate in it in the overall district if i've got a teacher that's a cancer that's going through chemo she has the right to tell those kids they got to wear a mask yeah. okay i understand what you're saying now miss bullet how to protect our teachers i yep. think we're wrong if yeah, we don't do students. that Okay. So, uh, is there a motion to do something? I make a motion. I got one more. I got to go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, so, I would like the public to know what has happened with Madison and Ridgeland. And it came to my attention later, I mean, late this afternoon, that their infection rate has not increased as a school body. And Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that it hasn't increased since they lifted their mandate. It has not. So... I, I mean, if we use a model similar to that, instead of just using the Warren County model, which is all the adults, if we have an 8% infection rate with everyone in Warren County, what is the infection rate of the kids in the school? That's more, I, I'm more concerned with that number than I am the global number. The total county. And so I, if we have a two and three and one and 7% uh, you know, student body, not including teachers, but just a student body infection rate. We're already, I think it's more of a more. But of you're a, already uh, there now. You're already at that level now. What do you uh, explain that? You're, you're you're already at that level now. What level? The infection what? rate of students right now, because we're wearing masks. I don't know that you're comparing apples to apples. I think you have to look at what our students are in the community being affected to. Uh, Hines County right now is at 7%, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, I, if I'm mistaken, I apologize. But when I was reading all the numbers and my head was spinning, I was looking at some of the other counties that had already lifted the mask mandate, Hines County being one, and their, their overall in, uh, positivity rate, I'm using that interchangeably with infection rate, I'm sorry, their positivity rate was, I think, 7%. Um, they're a lot bigger county, they have a lot more population, it's easier, you know, it's, we're a smaller population, one or two, you know, throws our numbers up. We only had 23 new confirmed cases in Warren County this week. 20. And how many of those, how many of those were, were uh, school-aged children? How many, how many did you report last right. week for, for students? Um, you have, you have that how you many? Four. 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 Four out of 23? Yeah. And how is that trend, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Tim, if you tell me what that trend looks like, has the student infection rate been trending downward and has it, has it outpaced the downward trend of the county? When I looked at it, I may be wrong, you look at your data, but when I looked at it, it went down shortly after us putting masks on and it Correct. stayed yes. pretty much consistent with the mask then, even though the community went up which to me is proving to the community that the masks do work i'm telling you they work yeah. um but uh you know it's it's uh it, it was dramatic with the week or two after we did the mask that Correct. our rates went down the number of people we had to quarantine went down and so forth you're right it skyrocketed until we put but the, the mask community, on it, uh, positivity rate was going hey jim route. yes ma'am <laughs> Jim, can you clarify something for me? Yes, ma'am. On um, what constitutes an outbreak? What I, I know it's in our board in the in what we set up, and and I know that Doc can give that number to me. Doc, what exactly is considered an outbreak within a district within the school? Okay, so within a school, an outbreak um, would be considered as three or more positive cases within that group, within, within a 14-day period. Three, three or more, or more outbreaks. Three or more 
outbreak within the within a classroom is considered an outbreak? Yes, ma'am. Within a fourteen day period. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And for That's school, uh, Ms. Bullock, say if you have three areas of three or more. So if I have three or more classrooms that have three or more positive cases within a um, fourteen day period, then that could be considered uh, an outbreak for that school. And what was happening prior to, and please correct me when I go wrong, uh, Doc, but with being massless, we had uh, cheerleaders, band, football. We had, when one was sick, everybody was sick. The teacher sick, everybody in the classroom had to go home. Now, I, I will say, uh, we did take, we, we took a look at the percentage for those larger groups like band and football uh, maybe a month or so ago, two months ago, um, we brought to the board for, uh, I can't remember, it was 12, maybe 12%. We looked at that percent to be considered an outbreak. Thank you. Doc, you were breaking up. I couldn't understand you. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I was just explaining. Um, we looked at the, the larger groups like football, band, a couple of months ago, and we looked at the percentages. Um, we brought that before the board as an out to be considered an outbreak. I want to say it was 12%. I have to go back and look at my notes. But I want to say we looked at maybe 12% as being an, an outbreak for those large groups. Instead of just saying three or more, because we have a football team, there's three. Um, we looked at the percentage of that group. Okay. Are there any other discussion? What is the pleasure? I'd the like board. to make a motion that we um, we end the mandate coming back from Christmas holidays. Uh, we, we will have a board meeting before that to assess the level <coughs> of infection in the community and that we have a policy of if there is an outbreak in a classroom, that's a good point, Dr. McGee, or in a school that that classroom might be required required to wear a mask for 14 days or the school will go into a mask mandate for 14 days if there's a, a school outbreak. Okay, Mr. Pratt, let me uh, have a question there. She said we will have a board meeting. We come back from the Christmas holidays on January the 4th. We will not have a meeting before January 4th. We'll the December, have one December after. Meeting. If the December you said in the December meeting yeah. that we will have a meeting. To Assuming that all, I'll be glad to have a meeting, a special call meeting, if the infection rate is, is rises from where it is now and does not continue to, to decline, then I will be, I'll be more than willing to have a, I'm trying to give the public a, an option to see that there's an end to this so that we can end it over spring break. If, if these people are, if the infection rate's going to go up because of all the interaction of the holidays, that will be reflected in the Warren County uh, positivity rate and then we'll have to have a special meeting to to deal with that but the public needs to understand if the numbers keep going down when they come back after uh, after the holidays 41 school days from now that they will uh, not have to wear a mask we will encourage them to wear a mask we'll still encourage everyone to get vaccinated okay would you I, please okay ma'am I can't unless you put the teachers with autoimmunes in that um, motion so would you please restate your motion so we can make sure we're clear on the motion? Okay. So my motion is that when we return to school after the, the Christmas break, that we uh, remove the mask requirement. We still will encourage people to wear masks. Uh, as long as the, the um, positivity rate in Warren County continues to decline. To remove the mask mandate on January the 4th, which is when we'll turn back 2022. Correct. And if the rate continues to decrease, then we, we're good with the, yeah. what, and, and, and the autoimmune uh, teachers. And, the, and to say that uh, we, we, the superintendent developed a policy, because I don't know <coughs> typifies how you do that. I don't know how you. Uh, I think they would need to provide documentation to their principal that would show that they got an autoimmune deficiency in order to make their class. I think also that's the requirement they would have to provide 
medical documentation. Okay. So I think her, the problem that Sally's also got is this. So if my wife has cancer and I'm, te and I'm a teacher, that, that right. teacher may go home to someone who has it, so they would need to provide documentation of that. Uh, I think it would just be the, the teacher that would have it. I mean, the teacher could get uh, COVID in the community, too. It's not yes. like school's yes. not the only place they're going to get COVID. So if they're going home to somebody's got all of me and that, they need to be ultra careful because it's not just schools where they're going to get COVID. Okay, so, so it's just that the individual teacher has yes. some type of uh, community issue that we're, okay. That I, I think real quick on your motion, because I think it's, I'm concerned about the way that you stated. You said as long as the positivity rate goes, decreases. The positivity rate could do this over the next few weeks, which means it increases a little bit, decreases. I think you're, if I'm, I think maybe the way that if the positivity decreases from today's day, correct? Is that, would that be a fair assessment? Because it may bump, it may wiggle along the way, go up a percent or down a percent. If that's what you're trying to indicate, I would suggest that it be based on today's date. Well, let me pick, let's see real quick. Let's see what it was. Um, we were all okay with going to school in August with a positive, two, you don't want to do that. We're already there. Um, it said 21. When we had our last one at meeting before we started school, it was a, it basically, um, let's just say 10%. If it's below 10%. Okay. I think we're at 11 so My now. question with that, Brian, is are we going to, is this going to waffle back and forth? If it's, if it's 9 to 11, is it, are we waffling here or are we, are we just, are we done? When it hits 10, are we done? Yeah, when do we rip the Band-Aid off? What do you call? No. I, I say you rip the I say that in, unless we see some trend, I, I mean, I don't know how you work. We're, we're kind of partial words here. I, my motion would be that we end the mandate when you come back from, from Christmas. The, right. The board can, uh, that would be my motion, that we end the mandate when you come back from Christmas. If the board feels like the infection rate goes up, is, is increased, this is not part of my motion. We have the right to call a special board meeting in December and say, "Hey, we we need to we need to stop this." But I think you got to give the people some some light at the end of the tunnel to say, "When you come back from Christmas, we're going to watch the positivity rate. If things continue to go positively, in essence, don't go back up to the 27, 18, whatever they were through August and September. That we're going to end the mask mandate as it is today, but we will still have the provisions of wearing a mask if a classroom has an outbreak." wearing a mask if a school has an outbreak and wearing a mask in a classroom where a teacher has provided documentation to uh, that they have some autoimmune compromising situation mr attorney i think let's how about if we do it this way this i think i know the intent of your motion if it were to set a date certain which i think you're saying january 4th and that would be that date regardless unless the rate is above the if it's the 10 percent threshold you're trying to say unless it's above that threshold it's done however all this is subject to the board for consideration y'all may come back at next month's meeting yeah, and look at the numbers point, the point, and they're so incredibly low the point can they also change. made is it might go up to 13 percent one week and then go down to five yeah. so, so if it's if you came back here's the way i'm looking if you came back into school that's the date you've selected and you come back to school in january and it's nine percent it doesn't matter it's done it's lifted however the only thing would change is it's subject to it may bump up to 11 but you're still the board at that point has the option to make the decision you still may say we're ready to lift it it's not like it's peaked way up a lot that's all i'm saying it's subject to your decision obviously y'all can come back in next month's meeting and, and look change at the numbers up. and say we're pulling the mask mandate all together or we're doing something else entirely so what percentage of people come from? i don't know yeah. the, the, the drop dead date is is what you all were asking would be as the uh, attorney just mentioned would be january 4th 2022 to release the mask mandate but the, the question is being asked now also with the drop dead date do you want to include a eight percent nine percent ten percent or do you just want to make the drop dead date january 4th 2022 brian if i could with total respect for your motion if i could make a suggestion that we simply table this to the next meeting and see if this rate stays down 
if we do that, at least we're giving the people hope that it could go away in 30 days. If not, we're, we're hanging a January 4th date on them that is discouraging. That's my... Well, um, it, it, work, it kind of works both ways, though, is we're, we need to give a date that this is going away. Uh, I mean, or it's not going away. I mean... Okay, so right now we have a motion on the floor, and if I'm if if I'm wrong with my motion, Mr. Pratt, please, whatever you do, correct me. <laughs> Drop dead date for re releasing the mask mandate will be January fourth, twenty twenty two. If we have a teacher with that immune big words y'all use uh sh her class would wear a mask is there a percentage that you all want to and that's you mr pratt because it is your motion I, I or do you want to use time, just the drop day of day and day be, I, I just say that we ended on july on january the 4th uh and we have the opportunity to ascertain by before then what, if the percentages have gone up or trending up or trending down so I'm going to leave the percentage out of it. I will say okay. right now we ended January 4th. Okay, good because if the rates go up, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to. Where we do, we have the the call system to tell you to you'd have to wear a mask. But okay, so without the rate, here is the motion. I will restate the motion for clarity. Mr. Pratt has asked that on January 4th, 2022, that there would no longer be a mandatory mask mandate. It will be optional. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Is there a second? Mr. President, if I may, does yes, that include the language that a teacher with an autoimmune deficiency, a documented autoimmune deficiency, uh, would be allowed to uh, require a mask in his or her class? Yes, sir. And, and it thank also you. includes if they not break, they would wear them. Right. Is there a second? The motion died for a lack of second. Are there, what is the pleasure of the board? I will make a motion that we table this until the next meeting. There's a motion to table. Is there a second? Motion died for a lack of second. What is the pleasure of the board? Well, we technically don't have to take any action on this. I mean, I mean, somebody may have a. Is there a pleasure? If it died, it died. Yeah, yeah both of those are gone. So, so did it die? Yes, ma'am. Both okay. motions died for a lack of second. At this time, we're still in the same condition we were before we got started. So in our discussions, is there, are we, are we not happy with the January 4th date? Are we, I mean, where, where as a board, where can we go with this? What is it that we need to fix in the language? Kimball, what, what do you need in the language? I would just, I would say since we're at our, kind of at our uh, benchmark number now that we lift the mask mandate and if it goes back up we raise we put it back in that's i mean that's plain and simple common sense if we're using a 10 percent number and brian said we're going to be at possibly eight next week we're already below our benchmark so why are we going to extend the mask mandate okay coach what do you need to see in this in this language to be able to make it work for you <clears throat> we need to we need to do the two we need to do the 10 day in January, when you come back, to make sure so you the, want, the test. Campbell want to see now, and you want to see the fifteenth. Yeah. That's why I did the fourth. I figured. Right. right. What is the pleasure? I just want to explain with it. Why are we playing with a number we've already reached? That's that's my concern. If we're already at ten percent yes. countywide, um, why are we why are we mandating something that is below I mean, our threshold? We're just saying we're at ten percent. I mean, we're not. We we threw the percentage out. We didn't have a percentage. 
what I'm saying is that our effective doctor, infectious doctor that we have, Dr. Edney, who lives in the community, right. I, I have enough uh, confidence that it's not in a, in, in a great hurry that much from the 4th to the 15th to make sure that our kids are safe as they can be. That's it for me. Mr. Turner, did you have... Dave. Okay. David. Yes. Did I understand that the CDC is um, recommending that all children wear a mask when they're on the bus? So even if we change the mask mandate, kids still need to wear a mask on the bus? That was the recommendation that they put out yesterday. But there are, we're going against their recommendation anyway if we lift the mask right. mandate. So I, we just got to decide which one you want to... So if we take no action, we're in the same shape we were in when we started this discussion? Yeah, you're yes. correct, sir. We've got to take action. You're correct, Madam Vice President. Make a we motion, Pal. We got to come up with something that all five of us can live with. And I know all five of us cannot live with burying a child in this district. So that's why this is so hard for all of us. So what is that? I don't know. Jim, do you have some suggestions? Or uh, David, can you guide us in something? What is Chad's feeling? My, my only thing, um, Madam Vice President, and I can understand everybody's uh, wanting to get rid of the mask mandate but the reason why the numbers are where they are is because of mass, number one. Number two, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a school administrator. I'm a banker. So if you want banking business, you come to me. <laughs> if you want your car fixed, don't come to me. It, the, the doctor here, who is Dr. Edney, is the chief medical officer who is asking us at this time uh, to continue. But we're saying if you just give us through Jim Sturgis, let me rephrase that. Jim Sturgis is asking if you will give us through the holidays, just through the holidays, to see how the rate is going to be, then you will get what you're asking for if the rate doesn't rise. And that's all we're trying to do here. It is not about me. We're looking at the health of the children. Now, I'll say this, and I'm deviating from what I shouldn't do, and Mr. Attorney, please stop me when I go wrong. I'm begging you to do that, sir. <laughs> Some will say the government shouldn't tell us what to do. Okay? I will say this. The speed limit is 70. When you go 90, what does the government tell you? Come to the judge and pay the ticket. When the red light is red, do you keep going? Okay, the government is telling you what to do. So, with that, I'll leave it there. But again, I, I can only go by what so our, our Dr. Next, Edney is saying here. Mr. Sturgis. No, sir, I cannot, we cannot entertain any uh, questions from you, sir. So but I appreciate your thoughts. Mr. Sturgis, real yes, quick. Um, our next, I see we moved our board meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, we moved it, yes, sir, because of Thanksgiving. November and December. So, meeting. when is the next board meeting? November 18th. 18th of November. Thursday. The week before. Thursday before Thanksgiving holiday. Okay. So, is there no action on this? Because I'm, I'm sure you all have okay, to one more, One more comment. Yes, sir, go ahead. So collectively as a board, I would like for us to know whose opinion we're basing our thoughts and our comments on. If it's the CDC, and of course I have the utmost respect for Dr. Edney. 
if, if that is the if that is the basis of our decision making I want the public to know what is the basis of our decision making is it our gut feeling is it our personal opinion or are we going to collectively as a board which we've always done what is the what is the collective opinion is it based on CDC guidelines the State Department of Health what is the what is our basis of this decision well we hadn't made a decision yet we have we mandated masks is with so what how do we back it up when our constituents call us and say why because I'm getting bathed with data that contradicts everything that we're doing and so in the process of getting all this data and it looks valid it's as valid as anything I've read from the CDC or from the state health department any of these places and so what I'm having to do is tell my constituents we are making our decisions based on X is X the CDC and the State Department of Health I would well if you, Mr. Kimball, you want to do it that way, but mine is Daniel P. Edney, who lives in this community and who I respect and I know that is a knowledgeable person in this. That's my decision. And I trust I trust him. Uh, on well, Coach, look, I definitely do too. My, my, my question is, is that the basis of our opinion? So all data being thrown out the door and tomorrow morning we get a letter that says, here's what we do. Who is that coming from? Because I don't think, along your point, I don't think the CDC is, at, we, we are requiring a mask mandate and the CDC has recommended. They haven't mandated, right? They're gonna always recommend you wear a mask because it, 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 it's the thing to do if you can. But it, we started school, they didn't have a recommendation. They then made the recommendation and we entered into our mask mandate, not solely because of the recommendation, but because the Delta variant in our community was skyrocketing in infection rate. And so we decided that because of the new recommendation and because of the situation on the ground, we were going to, we were going to, we were going to acquire masks. I, I guess my, my question is not being, not being interpreted correctly. I want to know who, who's, who's driving the boat. Is uh, we as a board are taking guidance from some piece of paper somewhere. And is that piece of paper coming from who? Madam Vice President, do you have anything? Well, I mean, I, I think that we're all crazy if we don't say that there is a part of every decision we make as a board member that is personally driven. It's driven by our heart. And that's why we do this job. It sure as heck isn't for the $180 a month. <laughs> and so... Amen. And so we're, we're doing it for the because we feel like we can make the right decisions for kids. And so... I, I'm not going to say it's driven by anything other than I think I'm, you know, I had three kids in the district and I have friends. I have a daughter who teaches in the district and you want to make the best decisions for 7,500 children. And then we're the, we're the first, we're the largest employer in the county. We, we've got lots of people we're making these decisions for. And so, Kimball, I, I can't say who drives my decision. So, you know, it, it's not driven by, I, mine is not driven by political, it's not driven by race, and, but obviously some people's are. Yeah. But I really strongly, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm vocal on that if we have a teacher with, a, with an autoimmune, you know, compromised autoimmune, we need to protect that teacher and allow her to do what she feels she's comfortable with in her own classroom. I, um, I, I think that I've talked to so many kid, people with kids that their kids walk out the door with the mask on and it's never even questioned. That's because they're, they didn't allow their children to even think they had a choice. And they put their mask on and they walk out the door and they're good. That's, that's the way it went. We got kindergartners that have never gone to school without a mask on. So, I, you know, I, I don't, I personally, you know, I don't get the huge uproar. That's me personally, and I've told lots of people that. So, but so Sally, I, I, I would ask one question, kind of going back to what uh, Kimball said, is that since we know the CDC is never going to recruit, probably never going to re remove the recommendation to wear masks, my question, I guess, to Dr. Edney, since we all do respect Dr. Edney, is that is there a community infection rate 
that if we reach in a community that is that he would feel comfortable with removing removing the mask removing the, the recommendation for a mask mandate ask someone who is in that position because personally you can't wear them forever so, so if you're asking us Kimball to make to do that maybe that's a conversation we need to have with Dr. Edney um, or other uh, to, to find out what that is but we we made the recommendation based on what was happening we do see the rate going down now if you asked me last month was I for removing the mask last month no nope. because we'd only had about two two weeks worth of the trend slowly going down but we continue to go down it's continued to go down goes up a little bit comes back down um, but what is except for rate zero uh, we you know you can't wait that long but you know what, what is it because I don't think this virus is ever going away that is no, it's not. Okay, it's going to be here like the flu, but hopefully with everyone being vaccinated and other mitigations and uh, treatments that we can control it better than we're, we have been able to control it in the past. And so masks might not be, will not be required. But w when do you get there? And I just think that, you know, we're in a hard position making medical decisions and um, my, my internet medical degree is on its way. I hope everyone else gets theirs too. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, um, I, can I can I make a motion that we 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 made a motion to table this, but I do think the next board meeting that we're going to take this up again. If we're not taking action today, mm -hmm. that we uh, either I'll make a motion to table it, and we'll have to bring it up, you know, and address it again based on the data at our November the eighteenth. What did you say? with that with the and you, you made something that was very interesting that i've been thinking about with uh dr edney is, I'd like to have a conversation is get, yeah have a conversation could we with, go could, could, with 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 him we have a conversation and, with him and, and discuss this if, if yeah i'm sure he'll be glad to talk with us about okay it. and i mean so I'm if, if we have a board meeting that means that everybody is uh included so uh we'll have to see we'll probably get the superintendent and the deputy superintendent and the associate superintendent to uh, have that meeting with uh, Dr. Edney and report to us uh, the findings on what the <coughs> approval rate would be. Two of us can have a meeting with Dr. Edney. Yeah, two can. Yeah. But, but if everybody wants to join okay. in, then we have a board meeting. Okay. And you cannot have it without notifying the community. Three or so what is your motion, Brian? My motion is to table the uh, ending the mask mandate till next board meeting. Since there's, no, since there's no action going to be taken on it, I want to make sure we're going to bring it up again. And it's been, second. It's been moved and properly second that we table um, K2B. Uh, is there a, uh, it's been a second. Are there any other questions? Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved to table K2B. At this time, we have waivers oh, for the use of the facility. Any questions? Is there a motion to approve K3? I make a motion we approve K3 as written. Second. Is there a second? Second. We move in property. Second. All in favor say aye. All right. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. With L1. District policy review. Yes, Come up. That um, board members is just uh, one of the, the policies that we have in place that the board has to review all of the policies. Yes. And we've, I've made a calendar. So each month we'll bring a section of the policies for you to review and it's just for your information if you like to see the changes or anything on there then we can move forward with that but each month i'll give you a chunk of the policy to take a look and review and by the end of the 12 months we will have reviewed all of the policies that we have in on the books okay. thank you coach while you were out um we uh tabled what we were speaking of uh section 16 Looks like everybody is up to date. Mr. President, I, yes, noticed, sir. I noticed on the list that one of those ag bids is coming up. 
uh, from rebidding first of the year, new, a new lease term. So I'd, go, I'd recommend y'all go ahead and authorize uh, the administration staff to uh, advertise for section 16, 18, 2. We could open them in December, but I know we've got holidays coming up and it gets tight on getting your notices in the newspaper. So it'd be my recommendation, y'all go ahead and, and authorize them to proceed with the advertisement uh, for bids and I'll probably make a motion be best to open that in December because we're already going to be tight on getting it since we're going to have an earlier board meeting in November. I make a motion that we advertise, we authorize advertising for section 161822. Um, is there a second? Second. Removed and probably second. Are there any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed like uh, sign. Opposed like sign. Motion is approved. Is there a motion to go into closed session to discuss the agenda for executive session? Like to make a motion to go into executive session. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly second. Are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. like sign. Executive session it is.